Hello everyone, we are Will and Alex, and welcome to part two of our Paris video series. In case you missed it, in part one, we were able to retake six photos in Paris. If you haven't watched that one, I recommend watching it first. All right, so we left off walking towards the Notre Dame. The first photo we'll tackle is this one of the bookstalls on the left bank of the Seine. These booksellers are officially called Les Bouquinistes, and their three kilometer presence along the Seine was actually declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1991. There are about 240 booksellers who use the 900 green boxes you'll see along the river. Next, we cross the river to find the Saint Chapelle. It was built to house religious artifacts, such as the Crown of Thorns. It's also known for its stunning stained glass windows. You can enter the chapel by reserving a time slot and buying a ticket online. A ticket costs 11 euro 50 for adults and people under 18 years old are free. Whoa, so we're standing outside the Saint Chapelle right now with this tower. We don't have to go in to take the photo, so it should be pretty easy. We just have to cross the street. Yeah, it looks pretty good. <laughs> Unofficial term. Cool. Now we can watch the Notre Dame. So we made it to the Notre Dame and unfortunately it's still closed after the fire in 2019. There's like a wall all around it. You can't even get close to it. So no tours today. You can't get close to it, but there's a really interesting timeline and outdoor exhibit detailing the restoration efforts surrounding the building. All right, so we made it to the point where we believe the picture is taken in the book. It's on the bridge, kind of overlooking the river and Notre Dame in the background. The problem is that it obviously had a huge fire <laughs> two and a half years ago and it's still under construction and the main spire in the middle of the Notre Dame burned down. It's completely lost so it doesn't look like the picture unfortunately but we still got it. Yeah, a lot has changed apparently. Mm -hmm. yeah. According to their website, the scaffolding should be taken down soon which is a huge step towards securing the site. We were really close to one more stop. We're gonna try to find it on the bridge. That stop would be this one, the bridge labeled Poste de la Tournelle. If you're familiar with Paris, you might be shaking your head about now. <laughs> Hello. Hello? Hello. <laughs> So it says that this is the bridge where the photo is taken, but it doesn't look exactly like it. So we're gonna take the photo and then see if we just run into any other bridges that look more like it. But I think that, I mean, it's good enough of a photo. We're gonna say. No comment. <laughs> Okay, we decided this is definitely not the right bridge and we're gonna keep walking a little bit since it's towards food anyways. There's a lot of little bridges right in this area, so we think the book just has it wrong. Ah uh, yes, another mislabeled photo in the book. Commence the wild goose chase, which brought us over many bridges and along many riverbanks. Paris has us working. So we clicked around Google Images, Google Maps, and found that the bridge in the photo is not Pont de Tournelle, it is Pont Marie, which is just across the like island here. It's like almost the same bridge, but not really. So we're walking that way now to get a picture of it. in the bridge. <laughs> okay. We're going down to Pont Marie now. 
Yeah. Okay, we're staying close enough. It's definitely this one. Luckily, after finding the correct bridge, we were actually quite close to the Place de la Bastille, the spot where we were meeting our friend from college. He showed us around the area a bit and we asked him to take us to another picture spot in the book, Le Halle. Now, this was an interesting one. The book says Le Halle are the great Paris produce markets, where you will wind up a big night at 4 a.m. for a bowl of onion soup with the farmers and market workers. We showed our friend Tony this picture and he did not recognize it at all. This is because the central food market was demolished in 1971 and replaced by this modern shopping mall built largely underground and connected to a massive metro stop. I find this kind of sad and if anyone knows where to find a bowl of onion soup in Paris at 4am, comment below. We just had a good time walking around with um, my friend Tony, who we knew from college. She lives in Paris. He showed us the Le Halle Palace, which looks a lot different now than it did in the book. He thinks that they probably built this huge market on top of the market. So now it's like a huge indoor covered area that's like multiple floors underground. And we are walking to the Palace Gardens now and ran into a building, which I recognize the name from the book, but it doesn't look like it. Le Bourge. I'm going to say it wrong. La Bourse. La Bourse. But we're walking around to see if we can find the picture spot before we head back to the palace gardens. We did not find this picture. I think we were really close to it. We should have been looking for this building, but oh well, moving on. The Palace Royale was originally built for a French cardinal and today serves as the seat of the Ministry of Culture, the Council of State, and the Constitutional Council. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Oh, hey. So we made it to the Grand Palais. We have the fountain behind us with that building from that photo. Mm -hmm. We actually think that the palace that's in front of us is more impressive than this view of the palace. So we're gonna do. What? Isn't that lovely? <laughs> so we're gonna sit here and enjoy some beverages before we walk over to the Louvre area. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. getting to be that perfect golden hour for taking pictures, so we'll definitely get a couple more tonight before we go back, get some dinner, and then call it a day. Yeah. The park where we were behind the palace is a public park. On our way to the Louvre, we made a pit stop at Comédie Française. We actually need to take some pictures inside, but in this instance, we just focused on the one we could take from the outside. Could be any corner. <laughs> no, because there's a big light pole in the back of this one. Oh, okay. Okay. Found like it. Your research, yeah. I think we got it. Research. Your observations. Okay, we are finally headed to the Louvre. So we're at our last picture spot of the day. We're right near the Louvre and there is the Arc de Triomphe de Carousel, which is in the book. We're gonna walk around, take a photo, and then find a spot for dinner and call it a day because we are exhausted. We took so many pictures mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Did a lot of walking. I don't even know how many. <laughs> our feet are sore, but yeah. it was worth it. It's so beautiful. Yeah, it was like a fun way to see the city is kind of like going to some random places, seeing some big sights. And then we had a little bit of a local tour guide for a while there. Yeah, shout out Tony! Thanks Tony! <laughs> Alright, let's get this photo. Top 
That's nice. We're working now to get the right perspective. <laughs> Afterwards, we got dinner at this place and tried escargot for the first time. Hello, good morning everyone. We are on our technically third day in Paris. And right now we are driving around a little bit to see some of the sights from the book again. And then we are meeting up with an artist who I follow on Instagram. I'm really excited to see some of her work. And then this evening we have some tickets to go to Versailles for kind of like an after after hours serenade ballroom dance garden lights experience <laughs> we're looking forward to today it's going to be a great full day in paris and now let's go see the arch the Arc de Triomphe is like a seven lane roundabout <laughs> with no lines. No lines. <laughs> we made it, I think we got a pretty good picture actually, get right up on it and um, it was under construction of course. I thought the Arc was under construction but it was actually being prepped for the art installation called the Arc de Triomphe Wrapped. I'll put that link below. During the time of the installation the roundabout around the Arc was a pedestrian zone and our before and after photo would have looked very different. I'm glad we caught it when we did. We headed to the Basilica of the Sacred Heart of Paris, otherwise known as the Sacré-Cœur. It is the highest point of the city and does offer a beautiful view. We were able to find a parking spot along this road here. The further down you get, you'll find the parking is reserved for taxis and buses, but there are spaces for cars near the public bathrooms. The Sacré-Cœur is free to enter, but if you want to see the crypt or the dome, the entrance fee is 8 euros. Afterwards, we went to the studio of the artist I spoke about earlier. Her name is Sophie, and I am obsessed with her work. I didn't want to film inside her studio, but here's a photo of the piece we bought. It was an excellent birthday present. There are a lot of talented artists in Paris, and I totally recommend supporting them and purchasing some artwork while visiting. I'll leave some of her links below if you are interested. After visiting Sophie's studio, we drove out to Versailles. We made an entire video outlining that experience, which I will link for you as well. We had an excellent time in Paris and look forward to visiting again one day, especially because we have a lot more pictures to take. Please leave your Paris recommendations in the comments and as always thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!